What's happening? What's chasing me? Whoa. Oh no, not that dream again. The next morning. Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I had a rough night last night. I had a bad dream and woke up in the middle of the night. This has been happening a lot lately. I'm tired of having all these bad dreams. I wish I could leave my own dreams and go visit others while they're sleeping, because I'm sure they're having way better dreams than I've been having. Sleepy Time is the episode where Spongebob visits the dreams of his sleeping friends. This episode aired on January 17th, 2000, and is the first episode to air in the 21st century. Well, so long, 90s. This is also the episode where Patrick dreams of riding a kitty ride and says, Shoot! That was my last quarter! As the world headed into the 2000s, Spongebob was doing pretty well. There were some great episodes at this point, and it seemed like that was going to continue. There are a lot of people who like this episode too, so let's watch this episode and see how good it is. So the episode starts up and Spongebob gets ready for bed. After saying goodnight to Gary, Spongebob falls asleep and he starts to dream. In his dream, there are Krabby Patty related items in the background. Spongebob's body parts get attached to a stone which later turns into Spongebob. He then starts driving a hot rod, but soon realizes that he doesn't have a driver's license. Then his driver's license appears and we see his personal information on it. Ah, so that explains everything we know about Spongebob's eye color, weight, and gender. Spongebob looked at his license and got distracted and stopped looking at the road, causing the boat to bump on some rocks and hit a big rock which sent him flying. He shows Mrs. Puff his license and then she rips it up saying that he can't even dream about getting it. After that, he flies out the dream cloud and lands on the bed as a much smaller green glowing version of himself and wonders if he's still dreaming. Then he noticed Gary's dream and decided to check it out for himself. Upon going inside, he sees a giant library and then he sees Gary on top of a human body and is amazed that Gary can talk. Sure, Gary can talk and that's all fine and dandy, but I think Spongebob's forgetting that Gary has a human-like body with human-like limbs. Gary tells Spongebob how dreams are much different from real life and explains by reading him a couple of limericks about dreams, with one of them being about a man from Peru eating a shoe. After this explanation, Spongebob decides to leave and Gary tells him to beware his wandering eye. Right before the dream Spongebob goes back into his own dream, he notices Patrick dreaming and decides to run over because he can't resist. He's not minding his wandering eye. He goes inside Patrick's dreams and he sees Patrick riding a kitty ride. He tells Patrick how in dreams you can do anything at all and demonstrates by turning into a skyscraper and making a million copies of himself. When the copies disappear, Spongebob decides to go to a different dream and Patrick takes out his last quarter for the ride, but it falls into the sewer. After Spongebob leaves Patrick's dream, he notices Squidward's dream cloud and inflates himself to go into it. Once inside, Squidward was playing his clarinet for a crowd and wearing a powdered wig. He notices Spongebob and starts to get angry, but a king gets mad at Squidward when he stopped playing. When Squidward continued playing, Spongebob was talking to the king about the man from Peru and Squidward got so mad he broke his clarinet. The king was furious at this, but Spongebob turned into a clarinet to help Squidward. Spongebob sang very loudly and off-key, and everybody actually loved it, but they loved the instrument more than the musician. Spongebob popped back to normal and left Squidward's dream, and then ended up at Sandy's place. When he went inside Sandy's dream, he immediately fell out of an airplane. Okay, how did he not see that he was about to fall from the plane? Sandy appeared and told Spongebob they were free-falling and landing on a target. When she tried to tell Spongebob about a parachute, he misinterpreted her, and she forgot to open her own parachute and landed in a truck loaded with clam manure. How did that fall not wake Sandy up? 
SpongeBob fell out of the dream cloud and decided to not mess with others' dreams anymore, but then he saw Mr. Krabs' dream. When he went inside, he saw all sorts of little girly things, and then he saw that he was in Pearl's dream instead, who was having a tea party with her stuffed animals. SpongeBob left Pearl's dream and went to Mr. Krabs' dream. When he arrived, he found Mr. Krabs fishing for the mighty Moby Dollar. When Mr. Krabs got the Moby Dollar close to him, he told SpongeBob to get the money net from his pocket, which was, of course, his wallet. After he got the dollar in the wallet net, SpongeBob accidentally let the wallet go, and the Moby Dollar escaped and Mr. Krabs was so furious, he fired Spongebob from the ship. Wow, this is the second episode in a row where Mr. Krabs fired Spongebob. Spongebob is shot out of Mr. Krabs' dreams, and he lands in Plankton's dream, who is dreaming that he's huge and taking over Bikini Bottom, shooting lasers from his eye. He destroys the Krusty Krab and then goes for Gary. Spongebob jumps over to Gary, but as Plankton steps on them, Spongebob turned into a pushpin, causing Plankton to deflate back to normal size, and somebody steps on him, which causes Plankton to wake up out of fright. Spongebob walks back into his own dream cloud, but as he goes to sleep, he sees his friend's heads. He wakes up and sees all of them around him, and they tell him to stay away from their dreams. Then Patrick asks if any of them have a quarter, and the episode ends. So that was Sleepy Time, and I feel that this episode is pretty good. My personal favorite part was Sandy's dream when Spongebob and Sandy were falling from the sky, and Spongebob misinterpreted Sandy saying parachute as either pair of shoes or parakeet, followed by Sandy landing in the truck. The dream sequences are really cool to see. They all make sense in the context of the characters, and they are pretty funny, especially Sandy's. There is one thing I always questioned here, even as a kid. At the end, when everybody screams at Spongebob to stay out of their dreams, I feel that he couldn't help what happened because he was asleep throughout the episode, and it was that little dream Spongebob that went from dream to dream and ruined everybody else's dreams. Holy cow, I said the word dream a lot there. Obviously, everybody saw Spongebob in their dreams, and he did screw up a lot of things, but that doesn't explain how they knew he invaded all of their dreams. I've seen my friends in my dreams before, but that doesn't mean they entered my dreams like Spongebob did, or that I tell them to stay out of my dreams when I wake up the next morning. Spongebob was asleep the entire time, and he wasn't hopping from dream to dream. As I already stated, the little dream Spongebob did all this. And even so, they were dreams. Most dreams don't come true. I've seen hot girls I know from real life in my dreams, but that means nothing. Does it? Since it was right at the end, I felt like it was an odd ending. Despite that, I still liked the episode. Patrick's dream was pretty funny with him losing his last quarter, and Spongebob scaring the audience by making a million of himself. Mr. Krabs' dream with the Mighty Moby Dollar was a cool part, and I love some action-y moments with this show, which we got with this dream as well as Plankton's dream. Also, even though Spongebob's age was never said on the show, the driver's license from his dream in this episode provides a clue as to when he was born. The same goes for Mr. Krabs. On Spongebob's license, it says his date of birth was July 14, 1986, meaning that when this episode aired in 2000, he would have been 13 years old, which means that Spongebob would be 34 years old as of June 2021. Mr. Krabs' license said his birth date was November 30th, 1942, meaning that when this episode aired in 2000, he would have been 57 years old, which means Mr. Krabs would be 78 as of June 2021. Of course, these licenses were shown in the dreams, so this may not actually be true. So I researched, and in episode 59, No Free Rides, Spongebob's license is shown with that exact date of birth. This means Spongebob would still be 34 years old as of June 2021. But in episode 375, Mall Girl Pearl, Mr. Krabs' license is shown with the birth date of September 25th, 1960, which means as of the time this episode aired in 2000, he was only 39 years old. And this means that Mr. Krabs would be 60 years old as of June 2021. While both of these were from different episodes, both of them were still in the real world, not the dream world. Therefore, it's real. Now that I'm done rambling about that, I'll wrap up my thoughts. This episode is pretty nice. It's pretty funny and the dream sequences are really cool. They're pretty creative and nice to watch and there are some great jokes throughout the episode too. And with all that in mind, that just makes it a good episode of the show in general. Sleepy Time is a pretty nice episode. There might be that odd point right at the end, 
But as a whole, the episode is really creative and funny, which is something the series as a whole does best. And with all that being said, I hope that I'll be able to have better dreams from now on. Later that night. Well, that dream was better, I'll say that much.